must have to develop and adopted a station area plan within a half a mile around that train station. You are part of that conversation tonight. Okay? You are part of that conversation tonight. You can give it back there. If we want to bring all the stakeholders into the game, that is you. That is UTA. Obviously, it's going to be whoever else we find that needs to be part of this conversation, and it defines in the law exactly what we're required to do. I want to indicate to you is, is that now they're saying is, get it done. And we're trying to work that through as well. Next chart. This one really got our attention. It said this. This Senate Bill 217 was approved this year. This year. And here's what it says. It says, if you basically have a Housing and Transit Reinvestment Zone Act in your train station area, and they have a name for it, they call it the HTRZ, it says if you're going to put that development in there, then the proposal must meet this requirement in the law. Mixed use, mixed use. Average at least 50 houses housing units per acre. It's telling you what it reads. And have at least 10% of those housing units in affordable housing. Here's the only safe to grace on this particular law. It's that last statement. Under the bill, the city could, not shall, could propose a development and zoning around that permanent station. So they have not enforced it. If Roy City wanted to basically take advantage of this act, we could do that, but we're not. There's a better solution, we think. Hence the conversation we need your input tonight. Almost last chart, okay? Next chart. This is the, this is the UTA policy written in 2014 that says when you're dealing with UTA properties, and by the way, UTA has one of the biggest property ownerships of all of the cities that has a TOD in it, and that's located in Roy. Second, only the 73 acres in Clearfield, the 20 acres they say, best record we can find is 18 acres, we have the second most acreage that UTA owns in Roy City. A big piece of property, they want to do something with it. But here's what it says today, that Roy City needs to consider. And it is the consider it's important to understand. It says this for density purposes, Roy City has been designated as a station community. So it doesn't have the maximum 50 people per acre, five story, six story buildings, doesn't have that. What it has is it says the minimum residential units per acre is 25 dwelling units per acre. So it's half of that number. Some of you may have read the report. Probably heard in terms of what the trustee for UK was saying to us in a meeting. It's important we heard that. They're hoping somewhere between 25 and 50. Interesting enough, this council will decide that. We'll decide that. That's their job. If you got some employees, they want 40 people per acre if you do employees. Okay. So that's the driving factor we're dealing with here. This isn't emotional about anything that suggested, well, these people need this, or we're looking for income. I'm gonna tell you right now, we started this role, we started down this path in large part because these laws that are on the books today are driving us to do this. And I'm gonna be blunt with you, and then I'm gonna get off the plate here and I wanna hear what you have to say. Every year, but I've been watching this since I've, since I've been a council member and since I've been mayor. Interesting enough, it seems the legislators are pulling away a little more away from the city's authority. A little more. UTA is a public organization. And if you want to have a real eye opener, ask the question to Steve and ask him how much influence did Roy City have on the building of that brand new Roy Jr. High. The school building, school or in this case, Reaver County School District, paid for and built that building. The only thing that Roy City could, in fact, have any conversation with them, have any influence on that building, 
is the setback and how many parking spaces. They had to be compliant to Roy's ordinance in terms of parking spaces and setback. That's it. The size, the shape, how many rooms, none of that. Roy City had any influence on or had any control. That was been designated by the legislator to allow the school district to manage and do all of that without any input from Roy City or any municipality. Here's my fear. If we don't come up with a solution, as blunt as I can make it, if we don't come up with a solution to this, and given that every year we're seeing our legislators pushing harder and harder against municipalities and saying you've got to deal with this affordable housing nightmare, then they're going to give, they're going to take ownership. And all they would have to do, all they would have to do is come in and basically say by law, and simply strip the municipalities of controlling these UTA transit stations and let UTA build whatever they want to build. And if that happens, you're going to have a nightmare. I'm going to have a nightmare. We cannot, we cannot do that. Today, we have control. I'm just concerned about tomorrow. And everything I'm saying is, if the cities are not willing to step up and address affordable housing in this state, I'm telling you, you can read my lips. The fact is, they're going to take it away from us, and they're going to do it for us. And that will be a monumental problem. And before you start to think, well, there's, all, there's obviously a better solution. Let me give you the facts. They're projecting by 2050. Now, some of us probably won't be around by 2050, but I guarantee most of your children and grandchildren will. Well, the population of Utah will double. We'll go from 3 million to 6 million. And 80% of that increase in population will reside in five counties. Five. Weber, Utah, Salt Lake, Davis, and Washington. I don't know what you're thinking and what I'm thinking, but that scares me. Utah County right now is anticipating by that date they're going to have a million more people in Utah County. That is absolutely off the charts. Not without water. Hence becomes the big issue. <laughs> and I'm asking that the state of making that same comment. I can't figure out how Washington County is dealing with it if they don't get a pipeline out of the Lake Powell to figure the water solution. These are serious issues. And we have an opportunity to fix them. But more important, please listen to what I'm telling you. We cannot do this in a vacuum. We need your ideas. We need your suggestions. We need your comments. And if you're willing to step up here, give us your name, your address, and let's hear what you have to say. We collectively can come up with an answer. Because I'll tell you what, I'm not so sure I have an answer. We have some ideas. We want to get your ideas. Let's see what we can do with that. Let me finish the conversation, and then we're going to get all the questions. Here's uh, Steve. You want to finish what we where we are today? Hey, I'm going to share it down. Uh, let's kind of continue on where we are today. So, like I mentioned before, in February 2020, they split downtown from Front Runner Station. Um, so in March, we started the conversation. We've had two work sessions thus far, and then we're meeting you tonight. Um, so the biggest things, and I'm, I'm sorry you can't see it very well, but I'll, I, at the end, I'll leave this map up. But to help with some of the concerns, now granted, you have a pointer, I don't. You point to UTA's property. Most of it's in the blue and a little bit of the green east of that. So those are things that if, if UTA came in and said, you know, we're taking control, we don't have control over those. But everything else within a half mile, we can look at. We've talked to UTA. Now, if we can get the density they're wanting in their 18 acres throughout all these properties, we're not going to have tall buildings. We can spread it out so it's not concentrated in one little area. So that's where we can do it, or they can do it. I'll just help them. But we can now start saying, okay, it's going to be. 35 feet, 50 feet, 60 feet, or whatever. But by saying that, and the, these are all divided up into different heights, so the blue 
is 60. We'll get into why we kind of come up with that number. The light green the striped is 35. Now in your R1 zone that most of you live in, your homes can be 35 feet. So we're saying these townhomes or these apartments or whatever they build down in those areas can't be taller than what your homes can be. So they may get three stories. Or if they're doing just townhomes, two stories with a nice pitched roof. The red, which is north of uh, 4,000 in between railroad tracks and the, the trail, uh, we're saying 60 feet. Hold on. The, the senior center, the 51 and older, over there in the corner that was built a few years ago that's three and a half stories tall, doesn't block anybody's view. And below that is even farther down in the topography. We'll go back. And then where we're sitting, over to the airport, we're saying 80. Now, library's not going anywhere. The school's not going anywhere. And America First isn't going anywhere. So this property really becomes null and void, but we make it part of the same project area. Um, a lot of that has to go back to the Focus Roy because it identified this as one of those areas. And then let everything that's east of 19, south of 4,000 next to the airport, let them figure out, you know, 80 feet should give them seven stories. If it's a hotel or just office space or what have you, let them figure it out. Now, this is where. Can you go back to that slide? Yep, hold on. Okay, so there's a green area, it's a square just east of the blue. Uh -huh. that's, the, that's the water. Yep. Right. Your water tank's not going anywhere. Right. We'd have to replace it somewhere. Okay. That's in our backyard. Yeah. yeah. Some property is unbuildable, like the water tank. It's not going to be <laughs> north of where that uh, 51 and older we own, and it's going to be a retention pond. So you're not going to have anything right there off of 4,000. But it is, you know, we got to start looking half mile around it. Can we get the density they want? not be affected by they saying it's going to be 10 stories tall we're going to have you know that's our fear is they dictate to us what they're going to do and we don't have any control if we can pass something that gives them the density within that half mile at a lower height we're going to be fine but we can make that just well i say we they can make that decision okay so topography wise it's hard to read but i do have the map up here Okay, um, I drew in some lines that are identified. So at the top line that's farthest this way in red is at 4450. The next blue line or purple line, which is 25 feet in topography, is 4425. And then once you get down to where the, the track station is, it's 50 feet below the ridge at 4400. Then once you go beyond the tracks, below that is another 25 foot drop at 4375. So already you've got a topography that we can we get to deal with. We go back to the green map, well, I'll just go forward. Where the green is, is only 35 feet tall. So you take into account uh, 2675 where it starts going downhill and the homes are almost level with the tracks. The homes that we built <clears throat> over there are going to be 35 feet tall. It's a 15 foot drop already in the track, so you're going to see a little bit. Up along the ridge, 35 feet tall, so even if it was a single family zone and someone came and built their home, it can be, 30, can be 35 feet tall. So no difference in that aspect. The topography comes into play mainly with UTA's property in blue and the red property. So that's basically all I have. So now it's really to leave the time up to you for you to come up and make your comments, your concerns, or what have you. We can try to address it as much as possible, but they're here to really just to learn from you what your concerns are, what your thoughts are. Okay?
So I'll, I'll bring up that one map again and just leave it up there so you, you can see that. Thank you, Steve. Okay, if you would, please step up to the mic. All we need is your name and address. Tell us what you're thinking. Mayor. Thank you. Mayor. Oh, one last thing before we get started. Maybe two last things. You got to ask if you, in fact, have everyone over the age of 12 is invited to a drive through or walk through. We hear the health department is going to give uh, vaccines, the Pfizer vaccine, right here in George Walden Park. Okay, that's going to happen Saturday from 11 o'clock to 3. Also, and by the way, there's a little piece of paper back there on the bench if you want to grab that. Also, uh, would you please sign up? We're going to pass this around. Put your name on it. Uh, we want to get that, but more importantly, put your email address. Uh, we collected the last time, and I suspect some of you have got that, about 60 to 70 emails. And we tell, try to make sure you're involved with everything that's going on on this topic. So put your name on there. Get your email on there. We'll make sure we get you on the list. And what we do, you will know about. Thank you. Name and address. Thank you. Byron Burnett at 4375 South 2675 West. My backyards are on the internet. It's not working. Yeah. 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 It's on, but we'll just tell you real quick. I appreciate this opportunity, by the way, and I know you don't have to do that. This wasn't mandated, and I know that's. Uh, True, and I'm not going to go through a lot of stuff I've gone through before. I've been here talking. My first letter to the mayor and the people that put this together was August of 2019. So some of you are familiar with me and know where I'm coming from. I think what I'd rather do is go to suggestions. And one of the suggestions I have right off the bat, and I've heard several of you mention the same thing, is that in the north and the south, Station district. Real life is you're not going to see neighborhood retail in there or businesses in there. And, and it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't make sense to do a mixed zone when you're not going to have mixed use. And this is my issue. This may be my biggest issue, and I'm going to bring up some other things. I disagree with Steve for once, right, Steve? Steve's not the one that put the sign in my front yard to invite me, obviously. <laughs> and I worry, I worry a little bit because just in the between your two meetings, um, you clearly agreed on 35 feet in that south station area, but it was all of a sudden it went to 40 before your next meeting. And I appreciate Joe speaking right up and saying, "No, wait a minute." 35. Well, I could have, I know Steve wants three stories and he knows I don't. I don't want three stories behind me and I don't want it in the Wilson properly above me because when he's saying a house, yeah, a house is one thing, but six townhomes or a big square flat top three story apartment up on the hill is now 45 to 50 feet above my house, not 35 because of the hill. And blocking people up there much more than a single home, which we still don't have very many single homes at 35 anyway. My problem is if you approve this as it is, it takes away your power to protect to defend us and to protect us. Because once it's established, a developer does not have to come before the city council and it doesn't have to go have any public input because it already qualifies for what you're setting as a zone. So you set that zone and you can have flat roofs, you can have pitched roofs, you can have, the only thing that manages density is the height. So you can get 25 per acre with three, I mean, that's all you're looking for in the station area. You can have, I've got, I've got, uh, I've looked it up and you can get 25 per acre on a three story apartment. You go four story, you go 40 to 75 and that's including of a parking structure and that may be 45 or 50 feet instead of 60 maybe these people that live off the hill can see their sunset maybe that'll work in the station area you're going to have to deal with 4,000 it's a problem already that's something you're going to have to deal with that comes out of the city oh yeah we're going to get more property taxes that's not going to pay for the improvements that's going in on you're going to have to go in on 4,000 
to handle the traffic in and out of there. I think you're already aware of the uh, parking issues and the problem with it probably spilling in or could spill in the neighborhoods. Um, and I I appreciate the I appreciated the UTM Beth Holbrook being candid about it. She almost warned you, don't do what Murray did. You know, go to West Jordan or South, wherever that good one was, and talk to them. She also reminded you it is your call what happens over there. I don't think Wilson's property should be in here at all. You know, last planning meeting at 5445 South 4300 West, the planning commission got a request for very high density for 35 to 40 townhomes on that property. Well, the biggest complaints were Hooker residents. That's where the border is. Well, give Ryan Cowley credit because he handled that meeting very well. He's very patient, more patient than I would have been with somebody, one of them. And he offered a, a suggestion. Now, I think you're going to see a proposal that you approve that high density, but with the recommendation that on the west side of the slough, which runs through it, next to the homes, you go single family. It's the same way on Wilson's property. There's 25 homes that border Wilson's property. Single family homes. You put three story apartments up there, eight row townhomes, you're blocking their views. It's not, it doesn't fit with the neighborhood. It's just wrong. Uh, matter of fact, the only thing that should be mixed use is this is UTA property. Down below me, I recommend nice town homes. I think we might get storage sheds, I guess. I'd rather, if you could ever resolve the access, I'd rather see town homes down there. You get 18 per acre. It meets the requirements of some of these Bill 34 and stuff because it's increased. You can go homes on small lots at 12 per acre, like they've done out in West Haven. There's a lot of ideas that will solve some of these problems, and some of that you solve when you finish the downtown. Some of the some of the requirements you've taken care of when you finish downtown. But you're going to have to do something, and, and, and obviously I want my views. Obviously I want my privacy. Uh, other people have been on there. There's homes down there on 2450, and the parking lot is only a few feet below. They're not up on the hill. They got to go look at a couple of nice sunrooms in the back, a nice new deck. They, they need, that needs to be considered because they've been there for 50 years. I moved in 48 years ago. We just like you to do the right thing. And I don't know why you want to go mixed use and lose control over density and growth in, in uh, Roy by saying 35 or 60 feet, 60, 60 feet, five stories, you put 115 apartments on this per acre. That's what you've got in two of these areas. It's going to block a lot. It's, that's a lot of people moving in. And you're going to have to find access on Midland. You can't cross the path, right? You can't cross the walking path. Or you got to go up to 1900 to have a second access to that property to the north, right? I just want you to do the right thing. And to me, I want to keep control. Because I wouldn't want the planning commission has a different job. I'll defend Steve. He wants to bring in businesses. He wants to bring in uh, development. That's what his job is. Your job is to protect us. Don't don't lose that by changing this mixed use and saying anything goes if it's if it's not higher than 35 feet. Anything goes if it's not over 60 feet and there's set right setbacks and certain greenery or whatever. Keep control of that. It's going to make you busier, make it a little harder on developers. But in downtown, but the downtown area, you just got to keep it low enough so you don't affect those people up on top of the hill. You keep it out of the neighborhoods. I think you've got that message about parking and uh, do the right thing there. And that's all we want you to do. We just want you to do the right thing. Okay. Thank you. People try to do these kind of things before. Uh, my concern is that the blue area where it says that the tracks will be, is there going to be parking for the tracks? 
there has to be parking, UTA is going to require people to have parking there. How they'll choose to do that, we still need to work through. Because uh, in the past, uh, I have went down with my car and parked there and taken the tracks down to Salt Lake, and it's very convenient. But I'm an old person, and I can't be driving down, walking all the way down there in the winter and walking all the way back. The other thing is, the roads, they're not really built to bring the traffic back up through. And we'll have problems with people speeding up through these areas. The, um, the other thing that I thought about is that, what about 5,600 east? You could build a lot of high-rise buildings in there that would be moderate. There's uh, a lot of buildings that are empty even there. I don't want to see the deterioration of our neighborhood. We have a lot of people moving in with family. They want a backyard. They want to have their kids play in it. They don't want people rushing up through their community. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Great comment. Mm -hmm. Name and address. Thank you. concern right there because you were saying that it's going to be about 50 units per acre uta is proposing for their property that property you're referring to is not uta property it's all part of what they call the station area right so we're looking at all available properties within that half mile radius of the train station so the part that's right. in blue and just a little bit to the east of that little part of green is owned by uta okay yeah. okay yeah, and you know my my biggest concern is not is it's you know it's going to impact my view of my my back door, but uh, that's not my biggest concern. My biggest concern is the density of the units there. If you're talking about you know fifty units uh, per acre, uh, that area right there plus the uh, yeah adjacent to the blue area there, the green area. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you're talking probably about 20 or 30 acres of property there. If you take 50 units per acre, then we're, we're talking well over, you know, close to 1,000, uh, about 750 units. Yeah, or 1,000. Just for clarification, Steve, the, uh, <clears throat> the only place that's really looking for uh, height size First thing is the green area. Everything you green in there would basically be limited to 35 feet. So that typically is going to be either be a townhouse or a single family residential. Okay. Uh, Steve indicated in the, in the meeting coming in, he says that the that uh, the normal house residential unit today can actually go up to 37 feet. So if you had a two story or whatever, that's perfectly acceptable. This is actually less than that. It's only allowing 35 feet. So everything in green is 35 feet. The piece in blue and the piece in red, the piece you were talking about, is higher. So that's the only place that you could probably see something to the magnitude of a of a of a 25 acre or what it's called dwelling units per acre. Okay. Is is a UTA here? No, I we try to invite them to everything, but they spent pretty much the last meeting, and, it's, and there is a YouTube video of it. Right, where they spend most of the time talking about UTA's interest and what they like to do with their property. Right. 
And I mean, had they addressed the safety concerns? And, exactly. Because, you know, the, with the building of, of units in that area and the downhill from the tracks, you know, in the case of a train derailment or a spillage or something like that, uh, is, is going to cause a massive loss of uh, life and property. I don't disagree with that. Uh, I don't think there's a there's a people in the public safety side of the house, and we don't have our chiefs here. Uh, but they would say any type of rail derailment anywhere in that corridor, uh, particularly if you go south where the housing is a little bit closer, right. uh, would be really problematic for anybody and everybody. So that's a real issue. Yeah, that, that's that's my biggest concern. Plus the traffic, uh, because the only road you're going to have access to that is well, 4,800 and then 4,000. Uh, 4,000 would have to. Probably have to turn that into a six-lane highway. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's bad enough it is on an uh, average day because uh, I come out at the end of 2275 on the 4,000. Well, I used to. I don't anymore. Yes. Because of the, the traffic, you know, especially during rush hour, you got the front runner coming through and let people off. You got people coming out of there, plus people coming home from Hill Air Force Base and otherwise. Uh, it, it, to, to me, it's just going to be uh, a super massive headache as far as traffic. Because right now, when the front runner comes through there, uh, or one of the, uh, the freight trains, you got traffic back all the way up to 1900 and down to the middle of the drive. If you add in additional, uh, I mean, 100, 200 units, you know, given the minimum or the maximum. You know, we're talking about uh, some pretty massive uh, backups. Yeah, I, people trying to get in and out of this. Yeah, traffic is really an issue. You're absolutely correct. And there are some issues associated with traffic that have to be worked out if, in fact, any of these proposals go anywhere, anywhere further. So, but you're right. There, there is an issue with traffic. We have to address that. Plus, can, is there any way you can fix the potholes in our room? That's the best time to make it. So, thank you. Great. Well, thank you. Appreciate your input. Thank you. I'm Pat Hansen at 3973 South, 2275 West. A um, couple people have touched on it. Uh, with the increase in population density, uh, with the increase in the population density along uh, the corridor there, my concern is enforcement and control along those back roads. Um, there's only one way in and one way out for vehicle traffic, for law enforcement and stuff like that. We already have an issue of people coming in and stealing property. Uh, that in the last couple of weeks, there was a couple of motorcycles stolen, and some dogs let out and killed. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going along uh, along that corridor. My question is, has anyone considered the enforcement aspect on getting in and out of those areas to enforce that? With, you know, uh, low or moderate income housing or whatever we're talking about here, you know, we all know what that means for the long run. And we, if we're going to bring that in, I would like to see some of those enforcement concerns addressed. You know, we've talked about uh, cameras along the overpass. There's already drugs down on the overpass. My daughter won't go down there, so it's not being enforced. Sunday with the rainstorm, it sounded like off-road racing. So people out there mudding and ripping it up. So that's what I'm gonna ask if we're bringing stuff in. Let's look at some of that enforcement. All right, thank Great you. comment. Thank you. My name is Chris Rollins. I live at 4023 South, 3225 West. Uh, what constitutes affordable housing? That's a good question. Uh, they will indicate to you it's, it's considered by the formula is 80% of the average medium income. So, and it's different amounts for different areas. Salt Lake would have a little bit higher, obviously, because the median income would be higher, but the cost of living would be higher. But the formula by which the state uses, and I believe federal government, is 80% of the average medium income. 
So whatever that number is, and Weber County has that, and they can pull that up if you have an interest after the meeting, I'll share that with you. Or just take 80% 80, 80 of that's considered to be in that affordable housing. Does it automatically tie to like Section 8 or subsidized housing for the government? It can, uh, because that's how some uh, like property owners may want to use that. The meaning is, is that there are grant programs by which they can get subsidies by state, even local, and that can be subsidized in terms of helping a renter, okay, or a property owner to be able to meet that requirement. And it's required to have 10% of that housing be affordable. Yeah, well, that's the going in strategy. The, the key is, and this is important because I've had lots of conversations. We don't want a project where everybody in the project is, is has a challenge in terms of meeting uh, the rent. Uh, the best solution that's been shown over and over again, it's been shown that if in fact you're going to have some portions of that property to be uh, have available to them special funding or grants, to the extent of like 10 or 15 percent, then in essence is, is that you will not know if a neighbor is in fact being subsidized or not, and it has a tendency that the community in those areas lift the person up. There's real challenges back east with these big projects where everybody is in there, and, the, and there's a lot of consequences associated with that. Okay, thank you for that. Just for clarification purposes, the current parking lots for UTA Front runner station will not be affected by any of these proposals. In other words, they're not going to convert parking lots into housing. Not necessarily. The, the development itself would bring in, the UTA would bring in a developer. The developer would have to use the current or the established ordinance by which this council will decide. And they have to come in with a proposal and they could take up existing parking spaces to put that development together. The city will see that. That's important, no, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they couldn't take up existing parking to accommodate that. Is it possible the access road going into the parking lots for UTA will be used by residents in the future? It, it depends on how the development comes across. If the development comes in and simply says, we're going to give that road to the city to maintain, therefore it becomes a public road, then and to your question, yes, but um, but, but we don't know, we haven't seen a development proposal, so we're not sure. But, but let me just, I, I think it's about time we get this on the table because you need to know this. <clears throat> take the screen, and I'm going to take this pointer. And just, just for, so there's no confusion here. That's 4,000. And from the middle of that street, 1,000 feet in is the farthest we can put a residential unit without having secondary access. Let me make sure you understand what I just said. This property right here, and I don't want to be judgmental, but this property has some real problems. It cannot sustain residential units because to get a thousand feet from that center of that street to our ordinance is that first building, that metal building, that's all the farther it can go in. And the reason for that was a comment that was made earlier, he said, is because of safety issues. We cannot put a residential component down here. We cannot put them in there and run the risk of putting a fire truck or an ambulance down there and having only one way in and one way out. Our ordinance will not allow that. The problem with these two properties, this property here and this property here, is there is no secondary access. And unless UTA authorizes us to basically go across that trail, to be honest with you, the property ain't going to do much. It'll probably always stay farm. There has to be a second access. That's the plan. We cannot put these developments at risk. So to your question, there's only one way into this property. And that limits any residential development to that first building. That's a thousand feet in. Anything else south of that won't happen. Okay, just a couple quick more questions, and thank you very much for explaining this. In the blue area right there, um, where it could be possibly 60 feet high, that's basically, if I read this right, it's from the access road into the parking lots down to the tracks. Is that that there's a big open field right there? That's what we're talking about, right? And there's a piece, if you right here on the end, right next to 4,000, 
there's that big piece of property right here. Right. And there's a road that runs up along here. All of this area and this piece down in here. Okay. It's wherever the level is, that's the height. Do you have any clue how far, how high the cell phone tower is in relationship? Just trying to get some perspective. Because there's a cell phone tower there. 80 or 100. So it's 105 feet high. high. And then, Steve, you, you talked about this. But as far as 60 foot, as far as heights, uh, it would only go up two thirds of the way on the cell phone tower, basically. Well, the height difference in this, where the cell tower is ground level, probably. It would probably be a little higher because UTA's property is still 25 feet higher than down there. So right. it may equal up to, but it's hard to say. And they likely wouldn't build it up to the height of the tracks. To build these housing units, they would do it on the ground where it's at now. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. All right, thank, thank you very much. But but here's the key, and, and please think about this as you come up. What would you recommend? If 60 feet doesn't seem to be right, what's a good number? Do you feel is, is three and a half stories 60 feet? Is that what we determined? Well, it, it, I mean, I, if you're in San Jose, Snake, it says I feel comfortable with three three stories, or I feel comfortable with two stories. Well, what is well, how many feet is three stories? Well, the, for one the story, is, there's not an industry standard okay. anymore for stories. It used to be everybody thought a story was 10 foot, but you may have one story that's 20 feet. That's why we've tried to back away from stories and say maximum footage. Because if we say three stories, if their first story is 20 feet and then 12 feet on top of that, you've got a, a monster in front. So we're trying to manage it the maximum height of feet. Right. And, and like the mayor said, if 60 is not it, what's here's some proposal? Yeah, and, and point average to your question, average right now. A story is anywhere from 10 to 14 feet. That's the average. But and so kind of think about that. But, but here, please think about this. If 60 feet there is not good, what do you think is a good number? Because this council is wanting to listen to what you think be the best option. If there's an option, well, available. as it was suggested before, if we can spread it out, because density is going to be height ultimately if you don't spread it out, right? Correct. So if we could somehow spread it out so that no one's views can be altered or you agree? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. David Andrews. 4302 South, 2675 West. I want to begin by saying thank you, Mayor and Council, for your service and time. I've seen firsthand the impact and the commitment required. I'd like you to know that I have intensely studied the process by which this ordinance has advanced to this point. And the following words are not directly focused on any one of you personally. I respect each of you. Uh, Diane, would you point out the property that I own? This is the piece of property that uh, I'm going to address. I own the 10 acres south of the front runner station labeled on the map and station south east of the track. So just what she's pointed out. The following is my position regarding my property being included in the proposed rezoning ordinance. To say I strongly oppose doesn't even come close to how adamantly I'm against what is happening here. I understand state law requires station, a station area plan to be developed and adopted that establishes and preserves the area within one half mile of the fixed UTA guideway station or in layman terms, the front runner station. The state law encourages higher density or moderate income residential development near a major transit station, as you mentioned, Mayor. I want to reiterate the state law encourages, but does not 
demand high density. Moderate income residential also meet the criteria. The proposed ordinance mandating high density and as such, so the, the current proposal is mandating my property to be high density. And as such, I believe tramples on the rights of private ownership like nothing I've ever witnessed. It makes <laughs> It makes, it makes me extremely concerned, as it should every person in this room, how we have ever got to this point. When a few have the power and authority to dictate what is being proposed, requiring my property to be included in this rezone is a form of eminent domain and is 100% governmental overreach. You, you may have the, uh, the power, but you don't have the right. Shame on how this has come out. I want my property removed from this rezone, or now I want to make this really clear, or provide me the option to determine if high density housing is right for my property when the time comes to develop. It's not your right to discard nearly a hundred years of historical precedence and change this property from its designated use from single family to high density. You're trampling on the, private, on the rights of private ownership. Please keep your sticky fingers off how the use of my property is going to find. It's not your right. If this is really what the city wants, they're going to have to buy my property, and for now, it's not for sale. There is no reason why my property should be included in this result. The state has passed no longer requiring my property to be high density. The county doesn't require it, so why should we stick? So, so why should the city stick their nose into redefining my property usage? They should. It's not required to be high density. Hopefully, I've said adequate. Hopefully, what I've said adequately clarifies my position regarding my property. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm a transplant. I moved here 20 years ago, and it has grown exponentially since we moved in. And the guys are in a sticky spot. I agree. There's too many dang people here. There really is. Um, my kids have grown up here, and they're young and married and can't afford a house. They just can't. There is no way you'd have to make so much money to afford a logical payment of some kind. You can't even afford a rental. They can't even afford to buy an apartment because they are so, so high. You don't, they don't make $1,500 a month between the two of them to afford that. It's just not happening. So I get what you guys are going through. There needs to be some kind of housing. Now, you won't like it. Probably a lot of you won't like it, but I suggest townhomes because they would only be two levels or below your 30 feet. You can put a lot of them and you can make them affordable for these young kids that are getting married and moving on and have a young family. We do have very nice parks. That's where your kids can play. Yes, we would love to all have a backyard, but it's not possible we have too many people. We also have problems with water, uh, things like Wi-Fi for us people who like to watch TV screened. It's not possible out here, but you go out to uh, the town out there. West Haven. No, not West Haven, but uh, Layton, Layton Way, and you can get uh, the Google Wi-Fi stuff. Yeah, the, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
But yeah, we, we need to have better stuff here. And you know, you guys have got a hard job, but we do also need to have better businesses. Our businesses took a hit with the COVID and they need to be built back up. But I work with disabled individuals and they would love to have a job. We just need to have people hire them. Um, I know that the little taco time, she would love to open up her restaurant. You know why she can't? She's got four employees and her. Those four employees have been working the entire time COVID's been in, the entire time. She can't afford to pay people $12, $13, $14, $15 an hour. She just can't. So it's 10. We can't get, she can't get anyone to, to come in there and work. They, then there's no jobs. So y'all have a big job. I would suggest town homes. That's the best, that's the best way to do it. Do not put up high density, big old towery things that make us look like a swamp. Because it's a nice neighborhood. I want to keep that. Call behind us, 2578 West, 4850 South. Uh, my main concern with the high-density housing, I moved here from a small town in Idaho. When I moved here to Utah, I was looking for a small town. I worked down in Salt Lake County as a firefighter. I've seen a lot of high-density housing down there, and that is absolutely not what we can it. Drugs, alcohol, trans infants, homelessness, it all comes with the high-density housing. It's not what I'm going to suggest, not what I'm going to raise my kids. I live right below this plan, so that's not where I want to raise my kids. Um, another another concern I have is the schooling. If you're adding this many more people, do we have a plan for the schools? Are they going to be overcrowded? I guess the question to answer that would be is we'd have to see what the proposal was before we can make a judgment on what that would be. But I will indicate to you, we've the Weber County School District is planning on three new schools in West Bay. Uh, I've already bought the property and then some. If they're planning to push a bond through, you will see it, okay, in terms of whether or not we vote on it, to basically build three new schools. I assume some of those will be, one will be a high school, I've heard, more than likely another junior high, and more than likely probably an elementary. So I, I'm really not the person to explain what that would be. We haven't even seen a proposal in terms of whether to vote to do that. Right, but not in Roy. That's my concern. My kids live in Roy. Yeah. Schools are already overcrowded. That's my concern. Um, and then I absolutely, absolutely do not understand why private property is on there. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Wilson's Farms, why that's on there. I agree with everything Mr. Wilson said and think that should be removed. Okay, thank you. We have the lowest unemployment rate in the nation. We 
We are going to continue to grow so we have the time to grow. We are going to grow less, which means you're going to have more and more traffic on this house. They can go to 31st Street and go up and around. But as we know, 1900 on 4,800 and 4,000 is difficult. Thank you for the roundabout. That's great, right? So now we have school. It's a, it's a city road. So the state owns 5,600 unless you do a road survey. And I, I agree, take the personal property off. Personal property is fundamental rights of the United States citizen. That's not up to date. <laughs> As far as dictating the state that students are left to live on, I'm also a state and county delegate. How much is in our district? Where I'm representing it. How should it be? Next time I talk to Cal, where I'm going to be working. So we can also pass legislation, right, whether we want an issue here in the way or not, through legislation. Okay. High density is not going to work there. I agree, it needs to be affordable. What is going in is not affordable. And by the time it goes up again, the, the cost to build has skyrocketed exponentially. So all your major builders have already stopped building and are just doing specs to control their costs, right? So the price is going to go up. Wages, hmm, again, thirty-five thousand is your average cost. You're going to have those jobs with Northrop Grumman. So unless everybody's going to get their degree and be bringing in that kind of money, or be a GS nine, ten, eleven at Hills. You're going to have a hard time. So your firefighters, your school teachers, uh, your city employees are not going to be able to afford a home, right? So high density, too much traffic, too much problems all the way around. You set a precedent, like several planning commissions have before, but then developers get to come in and have their way. So you have to either make it high density, single family residence, or townhomes. Because then the developer comes in and says we're doing it this way, and you have no say. That's all I have. Okay, thank you for that. Hi, I'm Angela Thomas, and thank you so much. I was one of the first council meetings that I attended because I was begging for the assistance for 4,000 across with the path. I, I didn't lobby and lobby and lobby, but thank you. Eight years later, thank you. So the first thing is, is while you're doing all these zoning plans, when I moved to my house on 45th and South, initially, if you had Verizon, if you walked from my front room to my kitchen, it dropped your call. And so please prepare for technical things because we can't see how the next 20 years is going to go for technology. But if the, the road is wider and things like that, there's spaces to put the new technology, whether it's underground, whether it's satellites, whether it's towers, please be thinking of that, especially because if they're going to be pushing for more people to get home, our internet choices are going to be in a lot of places. And me and none of my neighbors have the same service. It's very difficult for that. Next thing is, is I really want, while you're doing this decision making, I want a fire truck to be able to turn around, not just go in and have an exit. Because in Clinton, there's two subdivisions that I seriously looked at because they were affordable housing when we were buying. And I freaked out when I realized the fire truck could not turn around and that's just those subdivisions. So not just, and if you ever do have to call me anymore, which I did once, it was really nice when they came in. And it was really nice when Terry the fireman came in, but I knew the wrong thing was so long. So, Having him have the tools to do his job. And then 4,000 doesn't handle the traffic that it has now. There's not even a turn in the thousand people. And I know that you don't have control over most of it, but it definitely will not handle. So, okay. thank, thank you, you for your input. Thank you. Hi, I'm, can you hear me? Okay. Um, my name is Janelle Holbert. You probably got me wrong several times. <laughs> um, anyway, so I live on Westlake Drive, which is the longest, most busy one in my neighborhood, um, right below the track. And um, one of the reasons we did choose where we chose to live was because the tracks were there. And at the time, we only had one car. Um, we had one car for seven years of our married life. Um, we're 
going on 15 years, so about a little, well, I guess a little less than half now. Um, we've lived in Roy, I don't know, a little over 10 years now. Uh, we love Roy. I, can, I also grew up in a small town from Idaho, um, and Roy actually does feel small townish, um, as in the people. The people bring that kind of feel. They're down to earth people. I think that Roy is a hidden gem. Um, in Utah, and I would like to stay here for a long time if, um, you know, that happens. I mean, obviously, sometimes jobs and different things change, but right now we have no plan of moving out of Roy, so. Um, my oldest child is 13, and my other ones are little, so uh, my youngest is five. So um, just to kind of give you an idea of my background, um, I have met all of you, and I know that every single one of you loves Roy and you want to do what's best for Roy. And I do know that um, you have been trying to come up with good solutions and creative solutions, and, and I really appreciate that. And so one thing um, I'm kind of concerned about, um, and I have some ideas on, is that on 4,000 South, um, with um, Igor was pointing out, you know, you can't turn left when you come out of the, what is it called? I'm going to be working to the right. yeah out of the front, front runner. Thank you. Let's close that. Oh. Um, and some just some different things there with front runners. There's when everyone comes out of there all at once after that adds to the traffic. But the biggest thing that I've noticed is I go up there during school, you know, during all different hours, all the time. That's like one of the main roads we drive on. And um, one of the biggest things is when a train goes, then you're just backed up forever and ever and ever. And I've waited, I time it, and I text UTA every time. I have to wait over a certain amount of time. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, I've waited there at least 10 minutes. And that's it. I mean, there's been longer times when the train gets stuck, but um, it really does affect the traffic. So that is a main, that is a big concern, like some people have said already. Um, I, I have no idea if you're able to negotiate things with UTA about taking care of that area on that road as part of this whole thing. I don't know what UTA is willing to do that, but I would, you know, if we can negotiate things like that, because um, it sounds like something's going to go in there. Um, the reality is something will go in this area. And um, so I would love UTA to work with us on you know a bridge of some sort or some way to not have to everybody stop every time a train comes through. If it was just the front runner, it wouldn't be a big deal because it just comes and goes quickly. But you know we have the regular transfer as well. So that's kind of my main concern. But I'm optimistic about the future and I think I am excited about this area. I think um with all the suggestions people have made that we can make it great and that uh, my kids it will be something my kids can enjoy and enjoy. So, thank you. Thank you. Michelle Johnson, 4163 Path, 2175 West. I live across the street from uh, Dillon Park. Um, I've lived there for 32 years. I've seen a lot of changes happening. But I'm really confused at why the business park would be included in this proposal. We're not talking about building any kind of homes here. We're not talking about doing any kind of development. So why would we even include that in there um, at this time? It does not make any sense. We spent a lot of money developing the park, developing the school, developing the library. Why would we um, add the option then that we could go add town housing to that space that our kids are enjoying? Um, I would like to request that that area be removed from the proposal. Um, also, I would like to know um, if there's been any thought about adding police uh, protection for that area, if we're going to be adding the quantity of people that we've been talking about tonight. And I think that some consideration should be given to make a deep dedicated police support for that area, not somebody that's going to be way down west when there's a problem up in that area, because I think we can all agree that it's going to be continuous. Um, in the length of time I've lived there, 
from the beginning, you figured you were dumb, you never had to worry about blocking anything. Now it's a given that every night there's going to be somebody checking their cars if they're not in the garage. You're trying to see if there's any money that they can get or in the um, if, if you don't believe me, I have a video camera. I, I see it. Um, and every car gets, yeah, it, they just go down the street, boom, boom, check the car door, and they're on their way to the next door. The door happens to open. They're in there and out in seconds. They walk down the road with backpacks on. They fill those backpacks, whatever they find it, inside they hold themselves to. If we did have that dedicated police protection, we get on top of it, we could get it out of there. Um, we never had that before, but now with all the trash in it, it's steady. Um, I just wanted to make sure that people are aware of that. Also, I have a question. I heard that at the end of 4150 South, so the opposite end from North Park, I heard that they're going to make a road down into front run from there. I'd like to know if that's true. Well, we have seen no proposal uh, at this moment. Uh, we know there's a dirt road in that area. And remember, one of the issues that the development will have to consider has to have two access points. Uh, UK will not be exception if there was a development in there from a thousand foot from that four thousand. So there has to be a secondary access. But we're not aware of any plans. We haven't seen any development plans to do anything with that dirt road that's there. But we know it's going to happen. We no. know it has to happen. Well, uh, we don't know. Where else, where else could they get a second entrance? Well, Wilson's would step back up and probably say that there's a road right in front of him that also then so okay. might be access. Well, my comment is um, for those that don't know, 2175 West is the main route to the elementary school, the junior high, and the high school. The, the high school kids drop their, their brothers and sisters off at the elementary school, at the junior high, and the high school. It's a very fast road. Um, they've added. Um, a three-way stop to that section right there uh, on 4150 South. In order to get out of my driveway, I'm I'm one of the real fortunate people that got to have my driveway directly across from the entrance to North Park. It's really hard when you're trying to back out of your driveway. You have to dodge the traffic coming out of the park and the traffic coming through those uh, stop signs. You have to judge it. As soon as the one gets through the stop sign, there's nobody coming from the park and hurry and get out. I had to go out and stop traffic for my daughter to be able to get out of her driveway the other morning. We're talking about 7.30 in the morning. We're going to add all that traffic in. I'd like to request that if a road is created, not to allow it to come up 4150 South. Um, adding a roundabout there is not going to work. That's not going to help anybody who's trying to get out of their driveway because then there's going to be constant traffic with no no stops at all to be able to have a chance to get out. Um, lastly, I wanted to address the, the parking issue. I don't understand how there's only going to be one parking spot per townhouse. Mm -hmm. But from what I'm hearing, it, then they're going to be parking in front of people's houses. And I just wanted to, to remind everybody, take a look down at uh, by McDonald's in West Roy and look over at those luxurious condos that they, townhouses that they developed down there. I almost died the other day and I was down there for the first time. They were proposed as luxurious townhouses. As, as close together as they are, I can't imagine that anybody would look at those and, and think they were luxurious. Okay. So when a developer comes in and proposes something, you have to take it at face value that it probably isn't going to be quite like it proposed and maybe ask a few more questions. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Buckley, 4297 South, 2675 West. <clears throat> Boy, I, I don't envy you. I really don't. Um, I've been coming to some of these meetings. You've probably seen me at some of them and, and been involved somewhat and really concerned, just like everybody else. 
And I'll have to admit that some of these changed my thoughts along the way from some of the things that the mayor has presented. But at the same time, um, I, I have a few questions, if, if I might. First of all, 2675 West, right there where it goes into Wilson's property, is that road going straight through into the tracks and is that into the station? Or does that depend on development and what's proposed? Yeah, and that's a good question. Uh, there's nothing in this proposal that suggests that the private property owner will lose their property. Um, we're not proposing it. And <clears throat> Roy City has done everything you can to basically do not consider MFMD. Yeah. So the bottom line is going to be if the property owner chooses to buy out or be bought out, and the developer comes in under the intent of developing that property and chooses to extend that road, then that would happen. But it can only happen if, in fact, the property owner elects to sell. Okay. I, I know in UTA's plans, mm -hmm. and I've lived there for 30 plus years, uh, they've come out and surveyed for that road to go through. I've seen yes, it. And I walked out and asked them what they were doing. They were surveying from UTA for that road to go through that was years ago. So this stuff's been in the plan forever, mm -hmm. um, not just now. Um, if I understand the map right, UTA owns that red? No. No, no that's uh, eight acres of that is actually owned uh, by the city. So the frontage of that, the 4,000, is track. actually owned by Roy City. And there's about 20 acres behind that to the north uh, that runs from the Roy City property all the way to the Hinkley Drive, kind of a mountain right yeah. there. That's owned by a private. Mm -hmm. um, so UTA just owns that blue. Just the blue and the little piece of the green is to the east of there. The east up towards the house. Up towards the house. And and UTA wants that they're they're proposing the 50 per acre, right? 25. Yeah, they're yeah, they said 25 to 50 acres, uh, excuse me, 25 to 50 dwelling units per acre. Uh, but their 2014 POD study, and you can pull that off the off the web. It specifically says for this what we call a community station. Uh, it specifically says what they want is 25 units per acre. My problem is going back to Mr. Wilson when he was up here. UTA seems to have a lot of say in this, and they're the money. They're the state. Mm -hmm. And I guess we have to get into them, but anybody ever go to Mr. Wilson? Well, and ask him what he would like to do with his property. Yeah, and that's that's important. That's the reason why for all the property owners, and there is more pri private property owners than there is public property owners in that area. And they cannot, at least we're not entertaining anything that talks about forcing anybody to sell their property. The only thing the city council is responsible to be compliant with the policy or the law the state has done is to simply say we implemented some changes in the zoning. That's all they can do. Uh, if, if the council comes up and says, I want to go ahead and make, uh, I want to take advantage of some, like I've mentioned to you, Senate Bill 217, they can do that. Uh, but that's not even being talked to them. What we would like to do, and it was made at the very beginning of the conversation, we want to go back to UTA and convince UTA because this is a community station and there's numerous homes within walking distance of that station. We think they can get the ridership that they need in order for them not to be required to go to 50 minutes break. We think people will walk to the train station and use it because we have such a great <clears throat> collaboration, if you will, with the people saying, is, hey, I can walk there, I'll just go there. And we think we can sell that. The piece they have a control over, and to be honest with you, they have no more control over in terms of anything that the zoning defined by this council. But their piece, and the only piece they can actually talk about, is the piece in blue and that little piece in green to the east of it. Okay, everything else is owned by private side. I, as I know, I've seen the plans drawn up for all of those to intersect. Yeah, I've, I've seen it, yeah. so it's out there, everybody. Yeah. It's, it's right here in this library. Yeah. Um, and it's been there for years. So this is all that that property was already planned out. Yeah, Dr. Exactly. Wilson's property I'm sure was already planned out. So I just don't think it's right that, that there's that piece of property is in there. Um, but that 
aside from the point, back to 5600, and uh, I just kind of understand a little bit the money that the state provides. I was talking to my neighbors about this, and I don't know if this is even something that can be done or not, but Roy is a community or a pastor's city, right? Mm -hmm. Syracuse, Cooper, uh, West Haven, they're all driving through here. Why can't we do toll roads? Why can't we take 4,000 a toll road? You're a, you're a Roy citizen. Roy citizen, you have your pass, you have it, your window, you can go. I've been back east on the freeway and I saw the toll. Why do you not saying you don't need state money? You can make a lot of money, Mayor. Oh, I agree. I, you don't have to go too far to go up there to uh, Washington Terrace and see the one on that exactly. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that's something that city can look into or not, but well, the city owns 4,000. 4,000 and a couple of the others, 6,000? They own 6,000, 4,000, yeah. 48. So there's some big bucks there. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 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 Live on the other side of town from the proposed area. Mm -hmm. um, however, I did see some issues with overflow parking during snow removal. Where are those cars going to go? For the residents that live in those neighborhoods. Um, the other thing is the train traffic. My husband works for the railroad, so I'm quite aware of how much longer the trains are being. They're proposing up to five mile trains. So that takes quite some time, and that's not. With the trains having to stop with issues, and there's been a lot more pull apart with these longer trains. Um, so, an overpass would definitely be needed on the street widen. Um, I understand the need for affordable housing. Um, the other thing I would suggest with the limited parking to help address the overflow in the UTA area is maybe. Keeping it more of a senior limited mobility resident area that will be closer to the front runner because they can't walk a half mile down to access the train. Thank you. Um, and we got greater train traffic just because they closed Wilford Yard down in Salt Lake. So we have more trains stacking up in Ogden. So that's going to affect our tracks quite a bit. Yeah. Well, and, and to add to that, I will indicate to you uh, the legislators in House Bill 433 went out there and approved the UTH to double track uh, the UTH to the permanent uh, station. Uh, we're not sure what that's going to be, but their intent is to run the speed train between Ogden and Salt Lake and And you know, our place is already double track. But they're going to plan on making other more train and more track requirements so they can get that speed train to run back and forth. And so, um, yes, there will be a lot more trains. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
you. Great comments. <laughs> Property. Which one specific? Oh, it's down there by the, like the UTH. Well, uh, I'll put it out to you. The area blue with the blue checker is owned by UTH. Yeah. The piece of property just a little bit east of there, the green property, some of that's owned by UTA, but there's two pieces in there owned by Roy City. The piece that's south of there, so you're looking on the bottom right. part, is owned by a private hands, and that's owned by the Wilsons. You just talked about that. The green piece that runs up between the track and the trail, that's all private property. Uh, I couldn't give, I can give you some of the names of the people, but that's private property. Just north of 4,000 where the red is, is actually eight acres of that. The frontage of that, of that 4,000 owned by Roy City. And the 20 acres further north of the Heathley Drive is owned by the, um, by the Hanson family. Right. So those are all the principles of if you go east of there, the yellow stuff, you're dealing with the school district, library, which is owned by the county, and the coastal guy, Omega. And the okay, so to be clear, is that basically UTA has total control over it? You know, they will even they put what they want there? No, they they want. Want. no. And that's why this is important because the, because the law today says that this council right here. We'll decide what can go in there and what don't. And, and what we want to do is to make sure that we retain that. So as long as Roy City is moving in the right direction, I think we can, we can sound off, push off anybody who has a different opinion. It's the concern if we don't do something, I'm more concerned about that if we don't do something, someone will come in and do it for us. And that worries me. Okay, you gave the one to come in and do it for you. They can't today. But all they require is the legislators to change the law and they can do it tomorrow. And, and I'm saying as I'm concerned about that. So the state has control of the zoning uh, thousand feet either way of UK station? No. 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 It's can all up to So can Roy City just buy it with own structure? <laughs> I mean, it's just, just, it's bond, you know, just bond for it, let's buy it and do what you want. The banks are asking three to do that. And then the state one for three. That's an interesting part. Uh, it's owned by the state that, uh, because UTA owns it. But to your question is, is that we've never really thought about the city purchasing any of that property. Why not? That would seem to be really straightforward. Uh, and we can find the new three I mean, if it's only 500 bucks a person in Roy or something, it's better 200. I'll give you mine. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> well, if I don't want to know, it doesn't make sense about it. Too. Well, it's not a matter of making sense. I think I think the going price for property, particularly a property like that, would be close to hundred thousand dollars an acre. So to basically get eighteen or twenty acres, we're talking about coming over two million dollars. Our budget we have for the entire city is, is roughly twelve, excuse me, it's roughly twenty million dollars. And so you're really talking about coming over ten percent of that. Um, that's assuming UTA would have any interest to want to sell it. Well, yeah. How many houses do you have? Twenty thousand. We have uh, residents, we have about 40,000 people with 15,000 residential assets. You're talking 150 bucks a household? Just buy it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Please. Uh, well, by the way, we need to hurry because uh, they're going to plan on closing this at 9 o'clock. So it's important to try to get the fees. Your name and address? Lacey Sasa. And my number is 4298 South, West. Um, I'm not going to dispute a lot of things. I, I live right next to the Wilson property. I work with the property. Um, and so my, and I fully agree with them, but my concern is, and I'm just trying to understand, on the downtown property, they're putting walls, aren't they? Or bar like wall barriers to protect the residents and the, you know, the existing people that are living there from what they're building, is that correct? There can be, it depends on the development. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the ordinance basically says 
that if it's within a certain distance of a so you have commercial next to residential, uh -huh. there is a requirement that basically says they may have to be responsible to put a wall up there. So the development could require it. Yes. Okay. As a business owner, and something that we concern, we're concerned with, or at least I am, is vandalism and trespassing and um, just theft in general. I mean, we are hidden back there already, and it's kind of nice, but we already have people that will just pull into the orchard, fill their shirts with as many pages they can, and you know, run like and things like that. And the few people that come through the orchard, we're not too particular about, you know, as long as they're respectful, we don't mind. But with putting all of that, especially at the UTA, for our property, as well as those houses, I think that if they could consider putting a barrier of, I would prefer a wall, tall wall, not a fence. I don't even not even see the street so that they don't even get the idea. Hopefully, just give us that privacy from what's going to be built. If they could consider that, we would appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. My name is Brianna Reynolds from the Compact 38 Plus, 485 in March. Um, so my main question is, with these private properties, I don't think private property should be on the bill. But with that, they're mainly farming property. I grew up in Brigham. Look at how many orchards, how many farming properties have been sold and rezoned to be houses. What are you gonna do when we no longer have those farming properties? Where are you gonna get your fresh I mean, you can get fresh produce just with the California because it's not this easy, it's not worth it. Um, so my question is if you rezone these, even though they're private properties, are they like it once like if Wilson's decide to sell, are those now they can no longer be green belt, they can no longer be farmed, they have to be developed? Well, good question. First thing is, is that, uh, as I stated, the Royal City is not making any forcing action here. We're simply going out there and making a proposal with the zoning. Uh, I will indicate to you one of the challenges that any any development, these developments in particular, uh, if it changes the zoning, um, the property value is going to go right to the roof. And the fact of the matter is, and that's typically what we've seen in a lot of farms down on 6,000 lower part than it goes over. Uh, okay. Children got the property. The parents died off, got the property. Uh, they, the parents, I think, thought they were going to hold that 10, 15 acres forever. I don't think it lasted a year. And the, the children came in, they became ownership, they got it zoned, they got it changed, and they subdivided it. Uh, we set the standard in terms of subdividing. If any property on whether it be the Wilson or any one of the other company, your library will go. 15 minutes. The basic Any material can be checked out. Must be checked out in the next 15 minutes. Thank you. Can come in and actually request from the city. Yes. Okay. So, so your question is, we don't, we're not so saying that you can't do that. We just don't have to call it. 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 Call and the fact that it's private property, I don't even think it should be even discussed at this point. Um, I just feel like for any of them, it should not be discussed. And it should be less of an opportunity to have those farming ground. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Somebody's got rain in the state. But if I wanted to live in Salt Lake, I'd be a 
per townhome. I own a townhome in North Salt Lake where everybody has two parking places and that is not enough. People who live in townhomes have kids and all those kids ultimately become 16 and they all get a driver's license and they all have a car and we got a mess. We need probably four parking spaces per unit. If we're going to do townhomes, and don't don't even think about anything less, it's not going to work. Um, something else. Um, much of this conversation is prefaced on Northrop Grumman coming to fill our doors for us. Sure, yes. You know, the only way people living in this development we're talking about are going to get to Hill Air Force Base is by a bus. That goes up 4,000, which is going to exacerbate the problem even worse. Front order, you can get on here. The next stop is in Sunset or wherever. This, this train station is developed to take people to Salt Lake. That's what it was developed for. That's what it's used for now. And putting a lot of people here is not going to help. Uh, you might think about, oh, all these high, high paid executives coming in the north room. They're not going to live here. They're going to Syracuse <laughs> in some places where they can have a backyard and they can afford $500,000 for a house or more. I have a daughter that's, that works for a construction company and they're building houses in Lehigh. Nothing sells for less than six. Think about it. whatever we put up here is, is in the noise. Um, the other thing is, I noticed that Senator Buxton is not here. I hope he was invited personally, specifically, personally. Personally, I invited him. I've, I've sent him two emails this year and have not gotten a response from him on either item. Maybe we ought to think about who exactly voted for this. These bills that are forcing us into, into this hole, and maybe this crowd ought to think about we need a new senator. Yep. Hey, we do appreciate all the input. I've got a big list. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. The library will close. Thank you. Check out. Check out in the next 10 minutes. There is a there is an attendance list running around with some email on there. Please get your name on it. Thank you for attending. This is obviously no decision tonight, but we'll keep you in the post. This is continuing.